Welcome to Mongoose channel. Today I'll show you how to implement a web server with an MQTT client on any STM32 microcontroller with an Ethernet interface. The simplest way to do this is by using Mongoose wizard, but in this video I'll demonstrate the manual integration from scratch. In step 1, I'll create a skeleton application using Cube IDE that simply logs debug messages to the console and initializes the Ethernet pins. In step 2, I'll add a web server and an MQTT client to the application. Let's get started. Pick any Ethernet-enabled STM32 development board. I'm using the Nucleo F756ZG, but you can follow the same instructions with any other board. Connect the board to your computer and Ethernet network. Start Cube IDE. Select your microcontroller. Enter a project name. Under the security category, enable RNG, random number generator. Go to connectivity and configure UART and Ethernet. Use the pinout table in the Mongoose documentation to get the correct pins. For our board, we should enable USART 3, since it's wired to the onboard ST-Link debugger. Use pins PD8 and PD9. Now let's configure Ethernet. Enable RMII mode. Ethernet requires two components to operate, a MAC controller and a FI controller. The MAC controller is built in, while the FI controller is external. In our case, it's the microchip LAN 8742. It connects to the MAC using nine pins and communicates via RMII standard, which is why we need to configure the Ethernet pins in RMII mode. Once again, refer to the pinout table to set the correct pin values. We need to fix two pins, PG11 and PG13. The rest are correct. Do not enable the Ethernet interrupt, as that will activate Cube's Ethernet driver, and we don't want that, since Mongoose uses its own. We could enable NR TOS, but for simplicity, we'll continue with the bare metal setup. If we choose to use NR TOS, the same sequence would apply anyway. Next, go to the clock settings and set the maximum frequency. Save the project. This will generate the code. Implement the underscore write function to redirect printf output to the UART. Update the main superloop and add a simple debug message. Start the serial console, then build and flash the firmware. We can see the debug output in the log. Great, our skeleton firmware is working. Now it's time to implement the web server and MQTT client. Create a new source folder. Let's call it mongoose. Copy two files, mongoose.c and mongoose.h, from the mongoose GitHub repository. Then create a mongoose config.h file with a single configuration setting that specifies the build environment is cube. Next, let's implement a simple web server. In main.c include mongoose.h, go to the mongoose documentation user guide and copy the example code. Rename the main function to run mongoose. Change the listening port to 80 and call run mongoose from the main function. The event handler function responds with the JSON string at the API hello URL and serves HTML files from the current directory. Since we don't have a file system on this device, let's replace the file serving part with another JSON response, for example, reporting the current tick count, rebuild and refresh the firmware. Copy the device's IP address from the debug log and open it in your browser. You should see the expected JSON response. Now let's implement an MQTT client in addition to the HTTP server. The user guide doesn't include an MQTT client example, so we'll get one from the tutorial. Go to Tutorials MQTT MQTT Client 
open main.c and copy paste the code. Let's review it quickly. There are several variables, the MQTT server address, the publish and subscribe topics, and the MQTT connection itself. There are two helper functions, one to subscribe to a topic and one to publish a message. The MQTT event handler does the following, prints a message when the connection is created, sets up TLS if the MQTT server uses MQTTS, logs an error message on error, subscribes to a topic when MQTT connection is established, creates and publishes a response when a message is received, responds to ping requests, and sets the connection pointer to null when the connection is closed. The periodic timer function handles reconnection. If the MQTT connection is null, it attempts to reconnect. Otherwise, it sends ping requests to keep the connection alive. It also sets a last will message, by, which is sent automatically if the server detects a disconnection. Now, set up the reconnection timer, rebuild the firmware, and reflash. We are using the public HiveMQ server. Go to HiveMQ and launch the browser client. Subscribe to the MG123 hash wildcard topic. Then publish the message hi to the MG123RX topic. You should see a response on the MG123TX topic. If we disconnect our device, we see the buy message. That's about it. We've learned how to integrate a web server and MQTT client into any Ethernet-enabled STM32 microcontroller in the fastest and simplest way. Hit like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.